Deputy Darrell Bryan, please. Thank you, Honourable Member. Councillor Corda, on the third of February, you um, attended uh, the EU meeting in in um, Malta, and I just wanted to ask you in relation to what bilateral meetings you you held, uh, how many you held, how many meetings you had over the course of that day, and which. Um, uh, with, with which uh, heads of government did, did you meet? I'm trying to get a sense, really, Taoiseach, for the progress that we that you believe we're making within Europe on pushing forward the special and unique position that Ireland has post Brexit, um, particularly in light of the fact that the British government have rejected, it seems, out of hand that um, Northern Ireland should be granted any deal of special status. Myself and my party leader. Michal Martin yesterday met with the British uh, Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, James Brokenshire, where we very clearly said to him that Fianna Fáil as a, as a party are most disappointed and actually gravely concerned with uh, that turn of events. So I'm trying to get a picture from yourself as to how our EU colleagues um, are supporting us or not uh, in our position. And I know in advance of the negotiations that themselves they haven't started, but this is the positioning. And um, really, um, I think it is crucially important that whilst we'll be one of 27, and I understand that on the other side of the table, uh, Irish interests are, are our interests here in the Dáil and are mine, I'm sure that they are yours as well, and I just want to make sure that we're not um, going to be left behind or be part of the collateral damage that may occur post-Brexit. Uh, I think we've stated as a party, Fianna Fáil, and I have on numerous occasions as well, that we remain firmly committed to the European Union. We understand that there are unique issues between ourselves and Britain, a unique trading relationship, but a social relationship with the Good Friday Agreement. And finally, I'd say this to you, Tisha. Um, I know Minister Flanagan has also, also mentioned the concerns with regard to the unpicking of the Good Friday Agreement, particularly in the human rights agenda. Uh, but Minister Flanagan mentioned that last week, and then he seemed to change tack to take the British line on it, which the British line was that there's no consensus in the North for, for, a, for a Bill of Rights. I put it to you that we should be saying to the British government that we won't accept any dilution of the Good Friday Agreement, and we should say that as well to our European partners. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Deputy O'Brien. We will not accept anything less than full implementation of the Good Friday Agreement and its successor agreements. As you're aware, it's an internationally legally binding agreement lodged in the United Nations. Um, uh, I, I, I read out in the, in the reply there the number of bilateral meetings that I've had formally with different leaders. Obviously, at a European Council meeting of 27 or 28, you meet most people, but you don't maybe sit down and have you know, a 15 minute uh, either informal or formal uh, bilaterals, bilateral meetings, same as any other place. You, you meet them and talk to them. I would say this that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm engaged now in meeting each one of the leaders individually so that they fully understand our particular problems here. Uh, and that's why on the Saturday morning I had a, I had a particular meeting uh, formally with uh, Prime Minister Muscat, who understands that this is a political challenge in respect of the border and Northern Ireland and understands now the common travel area. Um, everybody in Europe, uh, Deputy O'Brien, appreciates that there's a peace process here, the only one. And so when I went to visit Spain to talk to Prime Minister Rajoy, uh, here's the situation. They've got Gibraltar, which is an issue that um, the Barnier Task Force uh, has to deal with. But Gibraltar is an issue between Spain and Great Britain. That's a, a bilateral between them. Uh, but obviously the Spanish would have great difficulty in saying, yes, of course, give a special status to Ireland, a special state, because of the fact that Catalonia is an issue for them. So the point is that we have a particular set of circumstances. We have a special designation in terms of a peace process, special funds in respect of interreg and peace funds, um, and so much other support, and we want to build on that for the future. So in my view, we already have special recognition and a special status that does not apply anywhere else. How can we expand that in the negotiations ahead? For instance, I met the fishermen last night from all over the country very, very complex situation, and we don't want fishing to be, as they say, siloed or left on its own. It's got to be part of the food chain, along with the agri-economy, uh, uh, agri so important to us. And yet, the difficulties in respect of the common fisheries policy are extraordinarily complex. 
um, and we don't want to be left in a situation right, where you. the fishing fleet uh, gets removed from exclusive waters of Britain, for instance, and has to have uh, put up with other people coming into the exclusive waters of the Irish. So we're glad to have the support of the party, and I do hope that uh, Deputy Martin and yourself will speak to your, uh, your, your colleague politicians in Europe to help make them aware of our particular circumstances here. Thank you very much. Deputy Breed-Smith.